Give me this fish for that. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Firstly, I would like to say thank you to Cambridge Union for this invitation to speak to this very distinguished audience. Uh, I'm, of course, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Uh, at one time, of course, we were known as Malaya. And as Malaya, we were a part of the British Empire. And we were a colony, almost a colony of, of Britain. Uh, although Britain did not conquer us, uh, they came in through treaties with promises to protect us. So we were British protectorate, but unfortunately uh, they were not able to protect us from the Japanese. So anyway, as a part of the British Empire, uh, we were brought up to be Eurocentric. We feel that all the good things must come from Europe. They are the only people who could do the right things. And so we borrowed from Britain in particular a lot of system, ideologies, uh, ways of thinking, moral values, etc. And when we became independent, of course Malaysia was uh, very pro-West. Uh, we looked to the West for guidance for ideas and the like. Halfway through, we decided to look east. This is not something which uh, ex-colonies do, but uh, we decided that we should look east. Because in the east, there are, there are many countries which have done very well. Japan, for example, uh, was doing quite well and was well on the way to becoming the second biggest economy in the world. There was also Korea. Then there was China and other Eastern countries doing quite well. And for that reason, we decided to look East, to learn from the East, because now we find that the East not only had caught up with the West, but in many instances had actually advanced beyond what uh, Western, Western uh, achievements. So after looking at the East, uh, we uh, learned a lot from them and Malaysia became one of those countries which made uh, tremendous progress to the point where it became known as a newly industrializing country or sometimes we were known as one of the Asian tigers. Uh, we learned from the Japanese uh, a lot of things, not just technology, but also we learned about their work ethics. And we believe that their work ethics contributed to their success. Uh, we tried to adopt some of their work ethics, and in the process, Malaysia was able to compete with the other newly independent countries, and we made uh, a lot of progress uh, unexpectedly because we were uh, an agricultural country, but uh, we became uh, fairly well industrialized 
by looking at uh, Japan, uh, Korea later on, and now of course we are looking at China. Now we keep on looking at the West, because the West have a lot to teach us. For example, the West taught us that we are not quite democratic. It's one of the things that we learn from the West, that we are not quite democratic. Although we do have elections, and uh, the opposition do manage, did manage to win quite a number of seats, but we were told that we were not democratic enough because we do not change governments every time we have elections. The same party won every election and continued to be the government of the country. And this lasted for 60, 60 years until uh, in 2018 when uh, the uh, government party the coalition uh, which won independence for the country, uh, they lost to the a new coalition of the opposition parties. Of course, uh, we were also not really, not really democratic. Uh, we were ruled by dictators uh, who had so many cronies. All the people in Malaysia who succeeded in doing well in business in particular, they were the cronies of uh, the government at that time. Again, uh, we learned a lot from this uh, criticism of us. Uh, we, of course, had dictators as uh, leaders of the government and we were quite corrupt and we were, well, we rule uh, without consultation with anybody else. So from the West, we do learn a lot of things from their criticism. But from the East, there was no criticism. Uh, they seemed to have nothing to say against us. But the West is always telling us, you are doing things wrong. You are not up to the mark. You are not uh, democratic enough and all sorts of other criticisms were levelled at us. And of course we accepted this criticism because uh, we feel that the West doesn't really mean what they say. You know the English language, sometimes they say one thing and they mean another thing. For example, the chairman in Parliament is called Mr. Speaker but he's not allowed to speak. <laughs> Malaysia, of course, is a member of the British Commonwealth of Nations, but the wealth is confined to a few countries only. Really. It's not common at all. During the time when we were under British rule, they used to call the Malay sultans the rulers, but of course they were not allowed to rule and the rulers had advisors who actually rules. So in the English language, when they say something, it doesn't really mean what they say. So when they criticize us that we are dictators and things like that, I don't think they mean it. <laughs> So we didn't, we didn't mind uh, being criticized. Uh, we also felt comfortable with Eastern countries which uh, never criticized us. Then we have uh, the New World Order, which is uh, constantly being changed, mostly by the West. The West comes up with a lot of new ideas and we are told we are told to accept those ideas. For example, they decided that there should be a world without borders. And of course, we never refuse or they reject the idea. We accepted the idea. Unfortunately, when they say the world without borders, they meant only capital flows. Capital can flow in and out regardless of the borders. 
But of course, later on, when you have no borders, people also want to cross to other countries. Now, of course, although they still believe in a borderless world, they are putting up walls and barbed warriors to keep out people. So the borders have come back for people, but for capital is okay. The, border, the capital comes in and out of our country. And at one time we suffered from a currency crisis because money came in in large quantities to buy shares in our market, pushing up the value of the shares. And when the sh shares were valued at a higher enough uh, level, they then dumped the shares, took their profits and left the country, leaving, of course, the locals who had invested together with the foreign investors uh, and, uh, hoping to have a very good increase in the value of the shares, suddenly finding that the shares were practically valueless. But these are things that happen all the time and Malaysia somehow or other managed to handle these problems, in particular with the currency crisis of 1997-98. Uh, we survived that because we were unorthodox people. Just as when people look, were looking at the West, we decided to look at the East in the case of the currency crisis, we did something wrongful. We, what we did was we fixed the exchange rate. Nobody can trade in our currency. And of course, we were told the country would collapse. But instead of collapsing, the country did very well and came out of the crisis. Now, of course, uh, the great minds in the IMF and the World Bank says, well, Malaysia was right in doing that, but it's too late for many other countries. So we see today the world in a very, in a, in a mess, the world is in a mess. Everywhere you see a lot of things are happening which should not be happening. In Latin America, we have huge numbers of people migrating north to go to America because they see America as a paradise. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Trump doesn't like the color of their faces perhaps, and he has erected a wall. But the march still goes on. Even in Europe, you're, you're seeing a lot of Arabs and Africans moving here by the millions. And one country at least put up barbed wire barriers. And the European Union today is not what it is supposed to be. Uh, we have Brexit, we have a lot of unhappiness about the Union, we have differences of opinion, etc. So that the European Union, instead of being a model for the rest of the world, has now deteriorated and is no longer regarded as a model. In the Middle East, of course, there are wars being fought. Why? It is because the Western world feels there should be a regime change. There should be democracy. And what is the result? The result is anarchy. In many of the Middle Eastern countries, there is um, a lot of uh, fighting, tribal wars, civil wars, and even open wars between nations. That is what is happening in the Middle East. And also we are looking at the confrontation between U.S. and China, and also U.S. and Iran. And this confrontation has led to warships being sent to the South China Sea and to the Gulf. And we are now on the brink of a war. God forbid that we should have a war now because 
we are unlikely to destroy this whole world. But again, the East is very silent. We are not proposing ideas for the rest of the world to accept. We are ready and willing to accept ideas coming from the rest of the world, basically from the West. And we find, unfortunately, that after fighting wars for more than three millennium, we find that the idea of wars to settle conflict is still there. And the threats are always being thrown at various small countries. And if you don't accept the sanctions being uh, imposed on a country, if you try to trade with that country, then you too will face sanctions. So the world is not free at all. We are being governed by the most powerful countries in the world. My belief is that war is a crime. Killing people, if you kill a person, you will be charged for murder. However, if you give, kill seven million people, you are decorated with medals and they erect statues for you. So this uh, seems to be at odds with uh, our moral values. You kill one person, it's okay. I mean, it's not okay. You will be charged and probably be hanged if you are in Malaysia. We still have the death penalty. But if you kill seven billion people, that's okay. You are glorified. Your name appears in history books and all that. So there is something wrong with our way of thinking. Problems, conflicts between nations should not be settled through killing people. That's what war is all about, about killing people. I think we should be civilized enough to avoid killing people. My belief is that unless we uh, reject war as a means of settling conflicts and instead replace it with uh, negotiation, arbitration, and a resort to a court of law, then I think our civilization will be uh, regressing. My belief is that despite four million years of uh, living as civilized people, we are still very primitive. We are still at the level of killing people in order to solve problems. I hope that one day the idea that war is a crime would be accepted by the world. I thank you.